So I want to make a video on testing the NVIDIA Tesla cards in a PowerEdge R520 server. And there's going to be a few problems if you try to do it that you're going to run into. So first of all, you're going to need a dual socket configuration with the relevant risers. And the riser you'll need is the T44HM. And what you'll see is this has three X16 slots that are electrically wired for X8. If you have the single socket um, configuration, you're probably going to have a riser with an X4 slot right here. And because of the orientation of the riser and everything, the card plugs into the middle slot, not the top, which if it plugged in the top, it'd be ideal, but um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, another issue you're going to run into is there's these plastic nubs here that will get in the way of installing the card. You can potentially run this without a shroud if you're willing to commit to having the fan speed at max or near max, or you just let the thing run really hot. Otherwise, what you're going to have to do is cut these fins off, and you're probably going to want to cut a bigger opening for airflow to get from the fans to the GPU. Along with, you'll need to cut a notch in the side around here to route the power cable down and through the back. At least with the power cable I'm making, and I'm sure this applies to other people's power cables too because there's just not enough length to snake all the way around. So what you would have to do, these are stubborn. <laughs> what you'd have to do is make an access path for it to go through and then kind of come through back this back side. There's a third issue you're going to run into with this. I'll leave that out for now. And we'll zoom in probably a little more. So there's some nubs on the back of these slot openings. And I think the purpose of these nubs, you can see right in front of my thumb, is to, uh, here we go, keep the cards or slot covers in place so they can't wobble back and forth. So when you install the card, it's not going to sit in place properly because that nub puts it at a slight angle and then the nubs on the slot retention bracket don't line up with the holes. So you can put the card in there, it'll be a little crooked, but then this will not work properly. Yeah, so it's not, it's not gonna go all the way down. So if you use this in a proper rack mounted configuration, um, you're gonna have problems, basically. Also, I'm gonna put the riser back in now. Let's see if I can get this out. There we go. I don't know right the first time. So in this configuration, you're not going to get a lot of card support. It's probably going to want to sag a little over time, and then it'll make contact with stuff. So if you're going to run it without the fan shroud, we'll zoom back out here. If you're going to run it without the fan shroud, you're probably going to want a spacer under the card and I would avoid cards that don't have the back plate that protect the back if you're going to run it without the fan shroud. So like this is an M40 as its back plate that's going to protect the back of the PCB from shorting out anything. Um, I can't specify which models that don't have a back plate off the top of my head. I know the Tesla K80 doesn't have a back plate like this and all the components are exposed. So that's something that you'll want to take into consideration. But if you run it like this without modifying the fan shroud, you're going to want to take some consideration to prevent this from sagging and shorting out anything. But in my case, I'm probably just going to wad a piece of cardboard under it. <laughs> uh, it's just for testing purposes, so it doesn't have to be good. So I'm going to get this all set up and going, and I'll be back. All right, well, I... Uh, <laughs> 
found a piece of cardboard carpet to use instead of cardboard. Um, like I said, this is for testing purposes only, so I don't care. So, I'll power it on and see what happens. Shouldn't be anything too exciting. I mean, this is all electrically wired correctly. But it will be interesting to see if the server throws any errors. And I'm just going to put the top cover back on so it has some proper airflow. Uh oh. Oh, my catching one. Huh. Well, top cover won't go on properly because uh, the um, slot latching mechanism won't go down all the way. I may have to do a separate video where I actually do the modifications to make this work. But I think for starters, or at least do the proof of concept. Yeah. If I had another set of hands, maybe. No, I can't force it. There's a locating pin in the back here that's also probably not engaging properly. Yep. So yeah, you're definitely going to have to uh, cut out that slot divider if you want to, <laughs> to close properly. But I'm not going to make you wait through all the uh, setup and stuff. But just wanted to show, at least for starters, that it powers on with no issues. Um, I don't know if it's going to do a life cycle recharacterization since I've added a new component. We will find out. I'll at least wait that long. <laughs> hmm. Come on, Windows. Well, looks like it's going to potentially do a um, hardware recharacterization since I changed the config. Yep, so I'll be back once I get back into Windows. Well, you notice it's a little bit noisy in here right now. I don't know how much that's the card uh, being in the server versus the uh, server not being shut properly. It is upset right now because it's detecting a case intrusion because, well, the cover panel is still bowed because so I can't close it properly. But it is currently running um, off the Tesla card. Since the Tesla doesn't have outputs and I can't disable the uh, onboard video without losing my monitor, what I've done is I've done the same thing as I did with the T420. And, you know, it's upset. I uh, connected it online. There we go. Um, I disabled the onboard graphics, which gave me the ability to use the Tesla. So we'll pull up GPU-Z. And we'll zoom in. As you can see, the card's under a moderate load, not heavy. Looks like it's only pulling 110 watts total right now. But if I really want to punch it, we will just, yeah, let's leave it running. I don't care. We'll hit it even harder. And I can launch Fairmark. So now we're pulling basically the max. Actually, not quite. These are 300 watt cards. Pulling 250 watts, which ain't bad. Um, that is definitely getting the threshold of what this server can handle because it's uh, running dual 495 watt power supplies, and I don't remember which configuration they're in. Hopefully, it's not redundant. <laughs> um, but yeah, now I'm really beating on the card. Basically 100% load, 250 watts continuous, and 
temps aren't too out of control. Uh, they're not great. I'd like to see this more in like the 65 range for the hot spot, but it's staying around 63 Celsius for the GPU temperature. Let's see if we can feel the heat. Yeah, a little bit of heat coming out. I don't have all the uh, slot covers and uh, I don't have the fan shroud installed still. I didn't put that back in. But, uh, yeah, so it seems to work. A lot of caveats, so, you know, might not be worth it. I think I'll do a separate video where I um, take an R520 and I make the modifications to make it better. Uh, it's just going to be a pain because I don't have the right tools and um, kind of making a time commitment to something that doesn't really benefit me, unfortunately. Uh, not to sound greedy, but... I think I'll do it to humor curiosity. I I think I can make the modifications within like an hour's worth of work because I need to cut these nubs off, make this opening bigger, notch out the side of that, and then cut out. I actually need to cut out both of the uh, alignment brackets on the back for the expansion slots. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But, um... At least for this video, proof of concept, I'm able to show that um, this is actually working in an R520, which I was curious about. Well, I thought the video was over, but there's actually a discovery I made as I was preparing to make the next video on this uh, server. And you can actually get the slot retention mechanism to go down all the way properly. It's just finicky. It still would be easier to cut out those support brackets, I believe, but it's not necessary. So there are a couple issues I was running into. The uh, iDRAC card wasn't quite seated all the way, so you want to make sure those are pushed all the way up against the case. Let's disconnect that so it doesn't move. And then same thing with the uh, Tesla. You want to kind of hold it in place, and you'll push down, and you'll have some spots where there's resistance. So what you'll have to do is um, move the camera here. This little tab that keeps it in place, you kind of have to push on it sideways uh, away from the card. And then it'll get down most of the way, but this top cap is kind of out of alignment. So you'll kind of have to manually force it, kind of wiggle it around till you find the right position. I think the card shifted a little. There we go. The cap, it's really tricky. You kind of have to push it in towards the slot and twist it a little. Actually, I think twisting might be the better way now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you kind of have to twist it the right way once you get down far enough. And now that it's in the correct position, Cover closes as intended. So yeah, <laughs> um, that'll be the end of this video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.